Hi, my name is Zandria Phillips and I am a poet and a visual artist. I think I began uh, writing and painting on two different kind of trajectories, or at least in my, my mind, they felt very disparate. Um, I've always loved color and drawing. I even remember one time having a really bad grade on a final in high school because I was like coloring and because I was really stressed out because it was finals and people kept saying, like, shouldn't you be studying? And I'm like, well, like I should, but I also know my mind kind of needs this right now. And I still remember carrying that bad grade on like a poetry uh midterm and feeling really uh bad about it but i think that kind of um that story kind of illustrates the way uh that art has existed for me alongside poetry um i've been a poet or a writer i guess since like high school when i felt like i didn't really have a niche uh i just kind of created my own worlds and wrote a lot by myself and then went to college and studied writing and got an mfa so it's kind of been a very traditional trajectory but I remember uh, finishing my book, Hull, and kind of coming up against this feeling to make something without an urgency of language or feeling really burnt out on language. And I also remember as I was writing the book, I was really, I felt this uh, urgent need to bring shapes into the page. If you look at the book, the forms are pretty radical and some of them are quite concrete in feeling. Um, so I think even before I was uh, truly painting um, and drawing and stuff, I was actually, I was actually like reaching towards that that visual practice. Uh, that's why a lot of the the work feels a bit busy on the page. I think it was busy trying to be visual art uh, before I knew I was a visual artist, which I think is, uh, I guess I think it's kind of cool. Um, but I started really getting into painting um, around, I think it was 2018. I was like putting the final touches on my book. I was feeling so angry about writing. I had like nothing to say to anyone, but I had so much um, kind of like creative output energy. Um, and I remember going to see Adrian Piper at the MoMA with my friend Marwa and just my head kind of exploded. And I realized how many different ways there were to be a visual artist and just kind of said, I guess that's what I'll do. Um, I remember being back home in Chicago and uh, I went to see Odobong and Conga at the MCA and then I really discovered my love of blue and uh, started really understanding how people were tying their 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 practice to like global concepts or uh, things about identity. So um, I think those were kind of my gateways into visual art. I ended up painting my own book cover because I was the only artist I could afford at the time and it, it turned out OK. Um, so lately they've just been uh, poetry and painting have been kind of circling each other in this nice way. I'd like to bring them more close together, more on the same page or canvas, so to speak, but uh, right now they've just kind of been fueling each other. I'm most interested in interrogating race or uh, the expressions associated with it in television. And I really like the phrase expressions associated with it because I'm thinking of, I guess, all kinds of concrete and abstract things that we link to race or like how we race people when we literally dress them up to play a character. Um, you know, for instance, like I'm thinking of um, I don't, I'm not actively critiquing Quentin Tarantino. Like, I don't think I have a dog enough in that fight, but I'm thinking a lot about his need to put like blackface on a dark skinned individual. Um, there are so many ways that uh, race is just, um, I guess like, I feel like it's, it's amplified on television. So I think for me right now, I'm just looking at, um, things I've watched so often and have obviously uh, been able to psychologically uh, change me or alarm me or draw me in. I'm looking at those kind of, uh, those kinds of televised, racialized moments. Um, a lot of HBO shows tend to have, uh, have this need to put uh, really, really 
big stakes, I would say, really mortal big stakes on Black characters. And I'm really interested in, in seeing how, or I guess addressing how like the stakes always become higher when someone who's racialized as Black has been put into this role of hyper stress or uh, supernatural uh, things of some degree. Like it's it's quite often a Negro who is expected to be uh, exceptional, resilient or otherwise. And I think I'm really tired of that. Um, but I also, um, I'm just curious about, more so about the mentality that brings that forward. I'm really interested in the psychology of film and how race is a social construct. It really lives in our minds and it lives in our minds in different ways, just like the color scale will live in our minds in different ways. So I guess, what film does is it can kind of mock a kind of unified experience of race because you're living kind of in the same person's vision or mind. Um, so I'm really just curious about what that does to people over a long period of time and like also just trying to give some newfound agency to some of these characters who as much as everyone tells me they aren't real I cannot find a way to feel that they aren't real. Um, I'm also investigating that. Why do they feel real to me? Why do they feel important? Why do I care if they're so subjugated and they don't uh, feel like a very good set of representation? Like, why at all? Um, I care about all of it. And I care a lot about uh, the passivity of television too um, and how we passively racialize people as we're just kind of not even really thinking. I think television also pulls that in really well. I think the role that art plays now, um, or I think always plays, I think people are always going through crisis, not to downplay what's happening now, but I think there just are more people going through it at this time. Um, I think what uh, art and writing can do is uh, function beyond linear time. Um, I think a lot about how life would be if we didn't have some kind of way to tell stories to each other, either through writing or through color, through image, what it would be like. Um, and I'm thinking about the fact that someone like me would have never been able to uh, hear something that Audre Lorde had to say, someone who was born or someone who died the year I was born. Um, I think about that a lot and just how, for me, writing really feels like entering a stream of consciousness and it's not like a singular stream of stream of consciousness but it's uh it's the the kind of lineage you're writing towards and out of and into into the future um it feels like really great to be able to pick a book pick up a book written in a time that was not 2020 or 2021 you know i think it's really important to just have uh to just have people you can speak back to people who are speaking forward to you without even truly knowing it um and I think, you know, I'm uh, less studied in painting in many ways, but I think painting also has a similar, a similar effect though. Um, I'm really interested in uh, storytelling without words. So I, I also think that painting is doing something really important there. Um, I'm just not quite sure how to put it into words, but I think that's the point, um, yeah. I think what's uh, surprised me about my career path or trajectory is kind of literally everything. Um, I grew up in like a 5,000 person town in rural Ohio. I grew up without any other black people there except for the ones in my immediate family. I feel so lucky to be able to have uh, black and like BIPOC communities to be a part of and talk about art and talk about race and talk about things you weren't supposed to talk about. Um, I just feel like my, everything about my trajectory kind of shocks me in a, a little bit. The fact that people want to hear what I have to say about anything. Um, I, I feel uh, people that I grew up with, you know, the, the wealthiest ones were like in agriculture. So it just feels, uh, it feels like I, I had to have a lot of faith uh, that what I wanted to do it actually existed. Um, and I feel lucky that it's so, in some way it's, it's panning out and I get, to, I get to kind of just invent um, all day and kind of play make believe, which is what I really liked doing as a child. I was been in, big into escapism and I was big into just uh, pretending to be someone else with my sister and just playing games. So 
every day feels like that a little bit. I just get to try on different hats. Um, and I, so I feel just really lucky in some ways, like I get to never grow up or uh, hopefully keep fostering my inner child um, in a way that feels um, really important to my current self. If I was stranded on a desert island, I think this is, I don't know, this is gonna sound so rigid, but I think I would most need a ruler and a compass of some kind. Um, because I, I, I think the island would provide a lot of like invented shapes that I could use to like, I'm thinking of like using rocks to make stamps. I'm thinking of like making ink from anything, you know, and just kind of, I don't know why I'm enjoying this fantasy of being on a desert island, but I'm just imagining like um, doing like a lot of experimentation with uh, what is there. But I think I would also be like, well, I do need a square. I am Xandria, I need a square and I need a circle. So I think I would uh, I would lean on those things. I'm also imagining like making my own uh, making my own kind of like compass out of like rope and a stick, you know. My wish for the world is a world beyond greed and capitalism, a world where. Uh, need is met, a world where um, competition is with oneself. You know, I just, I wish for um, a world beyond money, a world where I don't even have to think about selling art, I just get to make it. Um, a world beyond applications, a world beyond fear.